Well, well, Andrew Garfield open to returning as the iconic web slinger himself. Uh, yes, please. Uh, anyway, according to this article, we have how popular is Spider-Man No Way Home? It's so popular that it has started fan campaigns to bring back other Spider-Man franchises based off their appearance in the movie. Specifically, fans want Andrew Garfield back in Spandex and in the new interview with Variety, he says he's game. Yeah, I obviously I haven't talked a bit about it well about the topic of Twitter and trends and I've been away from my channel for like over a week so sorry about that but I have of course been swept up in the news and seeing all over social media that there's a trend going like make the amazing spider-man 3 and spider-man 4 for Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire but I feel like Andrew Garfield has had the biggest push when it comes to let's get Andrew his rightful conclusion to his trilogy or at least a third movie i've seen that the most out and then it goes on to say well he goes on to say specifically it was joyful and a feeling of closure for me garfield says of his much denied appearance at no way home yeah the whole i'm i'm not the werewolf and stuff what a liar man i mean that's the thing about actors they're good liars there was so many unanswered questions for my peter where we left it would he be open to answering more of those questions in The Amazing Spider-Man 3? Yes, definitely open to something if it felt right, he says. Yeah, uh, I was also reading a bit about when he got the call from like Amy Pascal and, and um, I almost said Andrew Garfield, Kevin Feige, the man himself, president of Marvel and shit. And it's so funny because he had all these denies like, no, I've seen it, it's Photoshop, or I'm not the werewolf, or I never got the call. It would be cool if I was in it, but I'm not. like. It's just so funny to see him finally embracing the reality of the matter. And this is something I would definitely be interested in. Again, it falls along the line of Toby where personally for me, I don't think Andrew will get like a, let's say Spider-Man 3. He'll get the amazing Spider-Man 3. I don't think he'll get a movie along those lines. But do I think Spider-Man No Way Home was his last outing as Spider-Man? I, I don't. Same thing with Toby. But I feel like Andrew would have more screen time for the future in comparison to Toby. And why I think that is because what I know about Andrew and his just his own personal character, meaning him being himself, his personality, is that he absolutely adores and loved playing Spider-Man. And I feel like he would 100% be open to returning for whatever they have in store. I know a lot of people have been theorizing for Toby and Andrew that it could be something along the lines of if there's a multiversal uh, fight with Kang and then Tom Holland Spider-Man is like, oh, I, I know some variations of myself. Let me get them. Or if we're going to do something along the lines of really embracing the multiverse with like a Avengers Secret Wars or something along the lines of that, I can see them popping up in there again. And obviously Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is coming out in several months. And there, I can't, I can't see Andrew in that one, but I can definitely see Toby. I mean, for God's sake, Sam Raimi himself is directing the movie, so it's like inevitable that Toby will be in there. And I won't deny it, a large part of me, I didn't feel like Andrew, some people were saying this, that Andrew Garfield stole the show, so to speak, when it came to Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm not going to agree with that, but I also wouldn't disagree. I was like taken back by how good it was. I've always thought this i haven't been the most forward with it i'll admit but i always thought he was the most talented of the three actors and that he really had the best chance at being sort of this um, perfect figure of what spider-man's supposed to be i always felt like he had the most potential i tom holland has had the best opportunity because he's had sort of more time to do with it but i just felt like andrew had the most potential but it was just like a wasted talent and it's just some of the things I've always thought about him that were perfect were his sort of when he was in the suit, it really genuinely felt like Spider-Man. But I, the biggest gripe for me was obviously has to do with the story and his Peter Parker, how they went in that direction. But those are things that are out of his hands and that you can't really dislike or give the actor shit for because it's not really in, within their control. And just watching him in Spider-Man No Way Home with sort of MCU writing and giving his own thoughts and able to really bring life into this character. Because he said he improv a few scenes, specifically the one where he said, I love you guys and stuff. I'm like, ah. 
it felt so genuine and real. A lot of their banter and their conversations felt like they were just like, say whatever the hell you want, but it just fit and felt so real and genuine, and I loved that. But specifically when I think back to the movie, there were three or four scenes I cried at. I, I'm not, I won't even lie. And one that got me, it's kind of funny. The Aunt May death scene didn't have, I, I felt bad for Tom Holland's Spider Man, but I didn't shed a tear or anything. I was like, oh damn, that's sad. I know it sound, that sounds a little dark. It's just, I really had no connection to Marissa Tomei's portrayal of Aunt May. And I felt like she was the wasted character up until that movie. I know she had good moments within the movie, but in general, relative to the other portrayals of Aunt May, I uh, just, I don't mean to say this, but particularly Rosemary Harris was my favorite and I think the most iconic, but just, it's funny there because the whole point of what I'm saying here is that didn't make me tear up or cry, but when Andrew Garfield was on the rooftop with Toby and Tom and they were having the conversation about like Uncle Ben and you have to keep enduring and you can't go down this dark path and then he's like, I lost Gwen, she was my MJ, but his acting there and the way he said it. I was so struck by it. It like really pierced my heart, so to speak. And I just let loose. I was like, damn, he's so talented an actor. And this is such a deep scene. But I just thought that that whole thing was incredible. Excellent job by him. He really outdid himself. And seeing him in that light and having the other fans see him in this light, it's just really exciting because I wish he would get another opportunity to continue down this path. And then another thing I think of is the scene where he saved MJ. I didn't think he was gonna do it. It's not that I doubted he could do it. It's just, I didn't think the MCU writers and John Watts were gonna write in that he would be the one to save her because I just felt like a lot of people I saw when certain people, I know it's getting weird and trippy here, but in the comments when they had the trailer and then everyone was like, oh my God, they cut the scene. No, that's Andrew. They CGI'd Tom Holland's suit over him or they said he'll not save her and Andrew will. And then other people reply in the comments, no, Tom's gonna save him because then that would negate his growth as a person if he fails to save the person he loves and all this sort of context of how it wouldn't work well with MCU writing and would do disservice to the story at large for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So with that, and then I heard also some leakers were saying, no, Tom Holland saves her, but they do have a conversation about when, which they did. And I was like, damn, I really don't think he's gonna save her. And even without all hearing all that, I thought too along the lines of, I can't see the writers for this movie sort of letting Tom Holland slip here and then having someone else come and save the day. I felt like this was really gonna be a Tom-centric film and they wouldn't necessarily give that sort of high energy fan service. They might have a parallel with it, but they wouldn't really give into the idea. But they did. The scene where he got knocked with Green Goblin, I literally stood up on my seat. I'm like, oh my God, is he gonna do it? And then you see Andrew was like saying no. And then he did use this little like spider kick momentum to go faster and stuff. And I was, I lost it. The people in my theater, I went first show and we all lost it. And then he caught her instead. And then he attached his web. Dude, I'm not even gonna lie, it's so funny because Toby was my, well, not was, he still is my absolute favorite live action Spider-Man. And my excitement for him was just unbelievable. But I knew he was gonna be in the film prior to watching it, like everyone else knew. So having something that was unknown, uncharted territory where is he gonna save her in regards to Andrew Garfield Spider-Man saving MJ or is he not? So that uncertainty, when it came to light that it was indeed gonna happen, I think that was my most exciting moment to watch when I was experiencing No Way Home because I was just so happy that they paid, not in respect, but they allowed that growth and that sacrifice to come full hand where he, in a way, redeems himself and he's able to find a little bit of closure there. Andrew Garfield also spoke on that matter and it was just a beautiful way. He said it was almost like cosmic uh, I, don't, I don't know if he said justice or just seeing that cycle, that reoccurrence and being able to succeed where he once failed. It was just so beautiful and I was so happy for his character. But yeah, I would really love another appearance for Andrew Garfield. I felt like him and Toby and Tom, they had such good chemistry, specific, specifically between Toby and Andrew. I'm like, damn, they really feel like they have good chemistry. Like they should have like some buddy cop role in... A multiverse movie or something it's just that it was so good and 
where he says, you know, we're all brothers. And he's like, I always wanted brothers. I love you guys. It, it just, it felt so family and so authentic. I just, the vibes it gave off and that he admitted himself being sort of the middle child in a way. It was just, it was such, such a great dynamic between all of them. And I would absolutely love for Andrew to get another appearance as Spider-Man, whatever it may be. Same with Toby, but Toby had closure and his character is a bit more defined and mature along those lines, whereas Andrew has, I would say not a more tragedy, but he's definitely has a little bit of darker shades, but a bigger heart to him despite all that. So having exploration of that just a little bit more would be very exciting to myself but i obviously would love to know what you guys think about the matter and i'm just going to mention this briefly to those of you who follow me on my channel if you're subbed for a while and you were looking forward to my hawkeye series finale reaction i regret to say i lost it no i'm just kidding it's as soon as i upload this video i'll, ha I'll have it out i promise and then daredevil i know you guys if you watch my channel i said i would watch daredevil and i fully intend to i've actually already watched that episode one i'm on episode two now on s don't say saturday on sunday every single sunday i know i delayed it a week but every single sunday an episode of daredevil will be out on my channel the first one is going to start this sunday so i hope you guys are excited for that and again to those of you watching this video just let me know your opinions on the matter of andrew garfield or Tobey Maguire, or how you felt about the Spider Bros in this movie in general, and where you think they can appear next. My personal predictions is that Tobey will have some small cameo in Doctor Strange. I don't think Andrew will, though. And then I can see some sort of Kang Avengers type multiversal event that's in the future of the MCU where Andrew returns, or perhaps he's a small tease in one of the Venomverse movies like morbius because that got delayed and some people are like they're gonna add andrew garfield as a cameo in there and then other people are like no it has to do with what's going on because i can't say the word because youtube takes videos down for some reason when they mention that word even though it's been going on for two years and then also some people said it has to do with the success of no way home they want to give it more time to breathe i don't know but personally i think this is not the last appearance of andrew or toby so yeah just again, let me know what you guys think. And until then, I will catch you folks in the next video.